Hi, you guys, it's Yaz, and welcome to the Game Exposed podcast. If you guys have a brief question on a narcissist and you want to submit it and have your question answered on the podcast, submit a brief question, you guys, no more than a paragraph because it won't be read. Um, text your questions to 917 636 1109 and text me your questions, and I'll try to get to as many questions as I can and answer them on the podcast, but please make it brief, no more than a paragraph, okay? 917-636-1109. Hi, you guys. It's Yaz, and I want to answer a very popular question I get time and time again. People always ask me, why does the narcissist always go back to their ex or why are they so connected to their ex? There's a simple answer to all of this, you guys. It's because they never ended it with their ex, all right? A lot of times, like 99% of the time when you meet a narcissist, They're still connected to either an ex or to somebody, a situationship, or they have something going on. When you meet a narcissist, most of the time they're never single, never really single. They'll tell you they're single. They'll tell you, you know, they're not seeing anybody or dating anybody, but narcissists lie. And a lot of times they're still connected to their ex because what happens is their exes may, you know, start to see the toxic behavior in them. Or they might notice that they were cheating on them and their exes, you know, either take a break or they dump them. All right. But the narcissist hasn't gotten over it. The narcissist is still trying to win back their exes. But in the interim of everything, they're out there hunting other supply. Okay. So you may be the new supply and, and think that, oh, this person is single when in fact they may still be calling having situationships with their ex, you know, maybe still seeing their ex from time to time, but they're not what you quote say, quote unquote, officially together. So they're not emotionally available. They're not emotionally and sometimes physically single. So you get into the relationship with the narcissist and, you know, sometimes narcissists even compare you to their ex during the devalue situation. They may even say something like, well, my ex never did this or my ex never did that. If you get involved with somebody and they're constantly bringing up their ex, that is a red flag that this person is probably not over their ex. All right. It's one thing to, you know, talk a little bit about what happened in your past relationship, But if somebody is obsessed with talking about their ex and bashing their ex, and this is exactly what a narcissist does, they will bash their exes, they will smear their exes, even if they were the one who was wrong and they're responsible for the breakup, even if they cheated on their ex, they're still going to smear their ex and they're going to, they're going to flip it and say they were cheating on them. They were going to say they're crazy. They're going to say they're controlling. They're going to project all the shame that they were onto their exes, all right? But they're, even though they do all those things, they may not still be over their ex. And also, it's a challenge. A narcissist lo- Narcissists love challenges. So, you know, they get involved with you, and but they're still not over their ex, and they want to know that they can kind of get their ex where their ex is thirsty for them, or they know that they have their ex as an option. They love to have options. So they could be in a new relationship with you. And guess what? They could be hoovering and contacting their ex. They could be talking to their ex and, you know, just, you know, getting back and forth conversation, whether it's positive or negative. And what happens is now the narcissist starts up with you. And now, you know, I like I said in my older podcast, you guys, always look at what the intent of somebody, the intent of a narcissist is never the same as your intent. Your intent is to go in, you're single, you're fresh, you want to meet this person and you want it to work out. But with a narcissist, their intent was something totally different. Their intent was to go in, get whatever supply, uh, you know, if they saw a supply that they wanted, And the other thing, too, is like I I said before, narcissists, you know, 
they're looking at you as somebody that is going to fulfill them and make them happy. So when they first meet you, and if they're not after a supply of money, they're looking at you as, okay, this is this person's going to make me happy. They're going to fill some void. They're going to do something that's going to really, you know. Th- so the narcissist puts you up on a pedestal in the very, very beginning because they're looking at you from the outside and, you know, they have an outlook like you're going to, you know, make them happy. But what happens is the more the narcissist gets to know you, the more they start to see things they don't like, or maybe that fantasy they had of you wasn't what it was. Okay. Cause they build a fantasy of who you are and what you're going to be to them in the very beginning. All right. So they are delusional in that sense because, you know, they don't, look at the whole person the way they should and realize that, you know, hey, you have wants, you have needs, you know, you you need sometimes, you know, to be nurtured as well. But narcissists, you know, they're one-sided. It's all about them. They don't care about your wants. They don't care about your needs. They're just totally self-absorbed, concerned about themselves, all right? So they put you up on this pedestal and when they see things aren't like going great, you know, that's when they'll be contacting their ex even more so because, you know, now they want to bounce from you back to the ex. But what you have to understand is this. Sometimes the new supply is not necessarily somebody new. It's it, it most of the time it's their ex. And the reason for all of this, like I said in the beginning of this podcast, is because it was never cut. The relationship was never cut between them and their exes. The other thing you have to watch out for is when you get involved with a narcissistic person, you have to see how long they were broken up because narcissists bounce right from one relationship into another relationship. And they may have even started with you while they were still with their ex. They saw things breaking down with their ex and that's when, you know, they were out there creeping and they came across you and you're thinking they're single and everything when they were still in the relationship with their ex. All right. This may be a reason why a narcissist wouldn't want to post right away on their social media after they broke up with their ex, you in their picture, because they wouldn't want their ex to know and they wouldn't want, you know, they wouldn't want their ex to know that they were with you while they were with them. They're afraid of that. And they're afraid that, you know, their ex will reach out to you and contact you and say, hey, they were with me when you were dating them. So that would be a reason why they wouldn't post it on their social media. But see, here's the thing, you guys, you know, an an ex will take a narcissist pack depending on how codependent they are on the narcissist, all right? Or if they don't know anything about narcissism. If you don't know anything about narcissism, you're not seeing it for what it is, okay? If you get involved with a narcissist and you take them back, you're thinking, oh, well, you know, they're promising to change. You know, everybody deserves a chance to change and everything. But what they don't understand, which you would if you understood narcissism, is that if they can't self-reflect, and this also goes for forgiveness as well, because I get a lot of people that talk about, well, you know, you need to forgive because God forgave us and all of that. It's like this, you guys, you forgive people that are truly, you know, who, who repent for what they've done. A narcissist doesn't repent. So forgiveness is not necessary. You do, your forgiveness is by, you know, staying away from them, by distancing yourself, by not, you know, seeking revenge on them. That's your forgiveness to yourself. But narcissists, you know, if they had the chance to do it over and hurt you, they would, okay? They would because they're not concerned with your feelings. They it's a survival tactic on their part. They're doing what they feel they need to do to survive and if you got hurt along the way, the way they view it is that's your fault, okay? That's your fault because you didn't know the game, all right? And 
See, the other thing too is what narcissists do is they manipulate both sides to the middle. They manipulate their exes and they manipulate the new supply. So they'll be sitting there bad mouthing their ex to the new supply and then they could be reaching out to their exes and talking about the new supply to their exes if they have that kind of a relationship, all right? So then that's where you get like the battles between an ex and a new supply where they're ready to kill each other. And it's all because the narcissist was a fire started, fire starter that started those problems. Okay. The narcissist is a manipulator that is going to manipulate the new supply to hate the ex or hate you if you're the ex. And they're going to you know, if they have a relationship with their exes, they're going to also, you know, throw the new supply under the bus and be bad mouthing them as well when the new supply pisses them off. All right. So they're always, when somebody pisses them off, they're always running to somebody to bad mouth them. They love to smear other people. They love to have other people agree with them. A narcissist's power is in numbers. All right. So the more people that agree with them, the better they feel. That's why they use triangulation all the time. They'll say, well, you know, even your mother said you're crazy. Or, you know, even your ex said you're crazy or something. They'll say whatever. They love to use other people. And they think because they're bringing other people into it, it justifies their argument. But the point is this, you guys. You got involved with somebody who was not, you know, they may have been physically single, but they weren't emotionally and mentally single, all right? So people ask me, well, how are you going to know? How are you going to know if this person is still emotionally tied to their ex? Simple. Notice, listen to what they what comes out of their mouth, all right? Listen to what comes out of their mouth. Listen to see, you know, if they bring up things about their ex, even if it's in a negative connotation. If, you know, even somebody that's talking badly about their ex, they could still be obsessed with the person, all right? It's not necessarily that they're sitting there, you know, reminiscing and saying, oh, my ex was so beautiful, my ex was so... No, they're not going to do that with you. But what they're going to do is they're going to badmouth the ex and make you think like, Ooh, they really hate them. They really hate them. But the point is, if they're still obsessing over them, they're still bringing them up. They're still smearing them and everything like that. And they, they can't stop with it. Then, you know, this person is not over their ex. Okay. This person is not, they're not emotionally single. The other thing you have to look at too, and watch out for is narcissists in order to go see their exes, they'll say, Oh, you know, I got to go see the kids or I'm going to stop by the kid by their house, you know, and, you know, we're just going to have dinner or something. Uh, you know, Sunday I go to see the kids and blah, 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 blah. You got to look at how close a relationship they have with their ex. All right. This is why I tell you, when you get involved with somebody, make sure you get involved with somebody that is not too friendly with their ex. All right. Because if you do, you don't know what's going on there, all right? Because you don't want somebody who's still friendly with their ex because they've already had a romantic connection with them, okay? And guess what? You have a fight with them or something like that and they go run to the ex and everything and the ex is consoling them and who knows if the ex even wants them back. Then what happens? You know, they end up sleeping together or something like that because, you know, it just happened. This is what they love. Oh, it just happened. It just happened. Well, you know what? Y y your partner shouldn't be too friendly with their exes, all right? Because if they're too friendly f with their ex, that door of opportunity is open for them to reconnect back with their exes, okay? So you got to have that boundary up where, you know, if they have kids with them or something like that, you know, curbside, pick up the kids, do what you got to do, you know, no sitting there fraternizing this and that and everything like that. And the other problem too is when they're too friendly with their exes, you know, they're, they're going to sit there and they're going to, you know, the ex is going to be in your business. All right. They're going to be advising the narcissist. Oh, I wouldn't put up with that. Or I don't know what. Why? Because the ex may be bitter and angry and they want to see the relationship fail. This is when, like you say, the narcissist is still friends with the ex. This is why you guys, you don't want that shit. You don't want somebody who's too friendly with their ex. Trust me when I tell you, because I've seen it time and time again 
where they'll run to that ex and they'll be talking to that ex about everything going on in your relationship. And that ex is a flying monkey, all right? That flying monkey is not in your corner. And the last thing they want to do is see the relationship between you and the narcissist work out, all right? So they're going to be working against you and they are not your ally either, all right? Because, you know, their loyalty will be to whoever is doing the most for them. They could be narcissistic as well. So they may still need the, neck, the, the narcissist in their life because maybe the narcissist gives them money. Maybe the narcissist does things for them because they have kids together or something like that. So, you know, always like look at the dynamics of a situation when you get involved with somebody. Always look at the outside people, the flying monkeys, Okay, and remember, because somebody asked me this as well, they said, can a flying monkey be a new supply? Absolutely. A flying monkey could definitely be a, a, a new supply. It could be like their homegirl, their homeboy. You know, it could be a close friend or somebody they work with, you know, that starts out where, you know, they're just their friend and maybe they're bad mouthing you. And then guess what? All of a sudden they got, you know, in a relationship with somebody from work. Okay. That's the flying monkey that was bad mouthing you or telling the narcissist, oh, I wouldn't put up with that. Or I don't know how you could be in a relationship with somebody like that. And boom, that person from work is jumping in a relationship with your narcissist there. Okay. So you guys, it's like this. Yeah. You got to look at what, who they're, people are. Who is the narcissist connected to? All right. Because the, who's ever the narcissist is connected to is going to have an influence on the narcissist. All right. And especially like if you're dealing with family, oh my God. All right. You better look at that family. I'm giving you gold here, gold before you ever get serious with somebody or you marry somebody. If you don't like that family, you better run, okay? I'm talking from experience here because you're going to end up divorced if they're loyal to their family. You're going to end up divorced, all right? And dealing with court battles if, if they're very tight with their family and their family is toxic. So you better take a look. People think, oh, they just got to deal with the, the narcissist or the person they're in a relationship. No, 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 no. And especially not when you have kids, all right? When you have kids, you're going to have to deal with these toxic people. So you better, you know, you better run, okay? Because the narcissist is always going to be loyal to the family more than you, all right? Even if their family was shit, even if their family treated them lousy and was toxic to them, these narcissists don't see it, all right? They don't see that their family is toxic. That's why I tell you the fruit don't fall far from the tree. So, you know, when the head of the tree is bad, the rest of the tree is usually bad. Not always, but I'm just saying, you know, a lot of cases, you guys. I'm not saying everybody, all right? Because you could have had a narcissistic parent and you could be okay, but a lot of people have narcissistic parents and they end up toxic and narcissistic, all right? So just be aware of that. But getting back to the point at hand, you when you get involved with somebody, Number one thing you have to do is make sure that they don't have any ties, connections to their exes, all right? So, you know, you want to watch this person carefully. And it, like I said, if they keep making excuses to go by their ex's house for the kids, red flag, all right, red flag, there may be a deep connection there. You have to look inside and see the dynamics of what the relationship is with their ex, if it is just platonic or if, you know, there's still unresolved feelings there. But this is why they're still connected to their exes because they never let go, okay? They never let go. Narcissists don't want to let go of anything. They're afraid of abandonment. So they always hold on to their exes or they want to be friends with their exes. They never want to feel alone. So they use their ex for whatever supply they can get out of it, even if it's just friendship, ju even if it's somebody to talk to. But you believe, trust and believe, you don't want that shit. You don't want somebody you're in a relationship still very friendly with their exes. Because again, that's a pathway for something to happen, all right? And you don't want to put yourself in a situation like that. And then you find out, oh, they went back to their ex. Well, they went back to their ex because they were still 
too friendly, maybe still talking, maybe there was unresolved feelings there, and you didn't know about it, all right? So watch if they keep talking about their exes, and watch if they keep seeing their exes and giving you a bullshit excuse why they're going over there. And, you know, also look into how long they were with their ex. If they were with their ex for a very long time, and they're still bitching and moaning about the breakup, they are not over it, all right? So look at how long they were in a relationship with their ex and look at, you know, how long they're broken up with their ex. That's how you're going to know, is this person clean, all right? And when I say clean, I mean healthy and available mentally to be in a relationship with you, okay? Because if you don't have somebody who's quote unquote what I want to call clean, meaning emotionally available, then this is where you're going to get involved. You're going to get your feelings with them. And guess what? When things don't work out, they're going to be hitting up that ex and they're going to be bouncing back to them. All right. Why? Because they were never clean from the get go when they started with you. It was not, you know, it was not broken. It was, they were not done with their exes. You got to make sure whoever you get involved with, they are done with their ex. All right. And if they tell you, you know, they, they, they're getting a divorce. Don't even go, don't touch that with a 10 foot pole. All right. With somebody who's not divorced, do not touch that with a 10 foot pole. You could tell them, listen, after you get divorced and you're divorced at least six months, then give me a call and make sure you have your divorce papers so I could see that you are divorced and make sure that they're court approved. Okay. You don't want any phony papers because narcissists will do that. They'll make up phony court documents if they're still married and they'll like show it to the new supply and they'll say, yeah, no, 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 I'm divorced or I'm going, here's the divorce papers and it's phony papers. You want to see an official copy of that divorce decree, all right, you guys, so that you know, because the reason I'm saying this and the reason why it's so important is because you know how many people get involved with married couples, married people, and they think that they're single? You guys, you guys, you guys, you got to be smarter than that, all right? That's why you want to see an official copy court document official there's a difference between an official document stamped by the court okay signed by the judge notarized all right you want to see an official copy of that divorce you you don't want you know anybody giving you any photocopies of some bullshit that they you know doctored up so you have to you know you have to be smarter than that don't get involved with that And, you know, make sure when you deal with somebody or you meet somebody, you move slowly and you watch their pattern of behavior and you, you know, there'll be clues along the way. There'll be clues along the way. Like, you know, if you're involved with them, they say, oh, I, I, you know, she called me. I got the the kid is doing this or the kid is doing that. Or so they'll use excuses with kids and stuff to try to get out. All right. And you have to see, you know, if it's something that's legit or it's something that's an excuse to always go see here or go there. And they may use other excuses too. They may tell you, oh, I have to go see my mother. Meanwhile, they're still going to see their ex, all right? Um, So, you know, if somebody keeps disappearing on you, red flag, all right? So I hope that helps you guys to understand, all right? Narcissists are slimy, they're snaky, they're con artists, and these are the kind of things they do. They're still in connection with their exes, all right? Because they're still getting something out of them. So I hope that helps you to kind of understand. Um, If it does, hit the subscribe button, share the podcast, um, go follow me on YouTube, the Game Exposed podcast, um, And also my Instagram is thegameexp123. And have a great day, you guys. If you guys are having a problem in your dating or relationship or you're dealing with somebody maybe that's narcissistic, you don't know if they're a narcissist, or you're just having problems, you're in a toxic relationship and you need some clarity on it, Go to the link in the podcast description for my website where I offer email and phone coaching. If you have a quick question, just a quick question, and you want to get a video sent back to you answering your question, there's also a link there for Vizio, 
where I will send you a personalized video answering your question. Hi, you guys, it's Yaz, and I want to tell you about my two books on Amazon. The first book is Regain Your Power. It's all about power and relationship. Who has the power in the relationship? And it goes into all of that, okay? The other book is Signs He's Not Into You, He's Wasting Your Time, okay? Check it out. It gives you a lot of good clues as to whether you're with somebody who's a real one or somebody who's just going to waste your time. You could read them both with Kindle's free trial membership. So check it out. Link is in the podcast description. Hi, you guys. I just want to let you know that the Game Exposed now has their merchandise available. Check out the link in the bio and you could go check it out. There's cool hoodies, cool sweatpants, cool hats. So go to the bio for the link. And also, don't forget to follow me on Facebook at the game exp123 and also on Instagram the game exp123 okay and have a great day mm-hmm.